Just asking. <laughs> I pray your fast is going well and that you will commit yourself to it. You'll understand that why Jesus did it. Uh, and you know, the question may ask you, why, why do we fast and pray? Why do we give? Why do we have to do all that? When you look at Scripture, you realize we are under grace. And uh, grace is a, such a powerful thing. If you look in the Old Testament, they were more under law. And, uh, you know, they were commanded to do things, and they did it. And here's why. Your belief affects your behavior. It's how you believe it's going to affect the way you behave. Everybody follow me? So in the Old Testament, they really believed if we, we got to pray to get out of this situation. We're talking about Jehoshaphat. We're talking about Gideon. We're talking about Moses who prayed and the waters parted. They prayed and believed God and it happened. Then they gave. They gave their 10% of their land or their fruits or whatever was their income. It was known as a tithe. They also would fast. They fast to change the mind of God. If we could fast, maybe God would turn his anger away. Nineveh, we talked about Jonah last week, you remember? So they fasted, and God changed his mind and didn't destroy them at that time. All through Scripture, you'll see what times they fasted. David prayed and fasted for two weeks when his baby was sick, and he asked God to rescue or to save the baby. The baby died. And David made a proclamation, and this is very important for all of us. He said, that child can't come to me, but one day I'll go see that child. Yeah. You've got to understand, you've got to think eternal. This is not all there is. There are things that will be taken out of your life, and if you don't have the right attitude, the right spirit, you're going to get bitter. And so David, the Scripture says, after the child died, he got up, he washed himself. How do you get out of depression? You've got to take a shower. You got to put on makeup, sir. <laughs> Underarm deodorant. That's what I meant by makeup for you. Amen. You got, you got to get up. You got to wash yourself. You got to anoint yourself. The Bible says he anointed himself and he went to the house of God and he worshiped. He reminded himself whose he was, that it was God himself. David was an illegitimate child. Out of all the brothers, his, his mama was not the same mama as the other brothers. So when you look at his life, he was a man born in pain. They, I'm sure they scoffed about him, laughed about him, but he rose up because of his love and worship for God. So why do we pray? Why do we give? Why? So under the law, you kind of had to do that. Under grace, we don't always do it because we believe we're under grace. I ain't got to give no 10%. God is going to be all right with me. I ain't got to pray. God loves me. He's not going to strike me. I ain't got to fast, but I look at it different. I thank God for the grace. I thank God for His grace. As a matter of fact, because of His grace, I want to give, I want to pray, and I want to fast. So if you haven't started fasting yet, there's anointing oil in these buckets. Amen. Why do we fast? Fasting increases our spiritual authority. I'm moving ahead of you, Sister Kim. Amen. Fasting increases our sensitivity to God. Amen. I, I'm, when you get sensitive, I went to the hospital this week to pray for people. It's important you understand that when I'm fasting, I'm not taking in perhaps all, uh, 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 certain things in my life, foods and drinks and things of that nature. And if you give yourself a break, and you just like this whole week, and it's not a braggadocious, I'm just, we've done this as a corporate body. I haven't had coffee all week, and I'm a coffee drinker. My mama put coffee in my baby bottle. I love some coffee. Amen. I mean, there's just something about it. But now I'm drinking tea on a Martin Lock an Englishman, and it bothers me. As you start drinking tea, you'll start talking funny. I'm just telling you straight up. All right? So it, it's just something. But you've got to set aside certain ways, sodas or certain things. I mean, you become more sensitive toward God. Fasting establishes priorities. Now I'm telling my flesh, this body, there's certain things you don't get. Now, yes, I celebrated with a hamburger yesterday, and it was awesome. <laughs> it was very, very good. Amen. I enjoyed it. But throughout the week, I've been really good. Been backing off, eating salads. When I eat a salad, can I tell you something? This is the truth. When I order a salad, I order less lettuce. <laughs> I tell them every time, can, can you take some of the lettuce? Because they'll pile all that lettuce and all the good stuff's on top. So take it less lettuce and give me the good stuff. 
If I got to eat a salad, I want the good stuff. And if they don't, I'll say, bring me an extra plate, and I'll reach underneath that. I take all that, all that green stuff off of there so I can just eat that top stuff. <laughs> Is that cheating? Whatever you want to say. Amen. So fasting establishes your priority. Fasting is a form of repentance. Amen. It helps me repent for being, from overindulging in life. So what should be the spirit of our fast? You've got to expect some physical struggles. If you're doing, like if you're doing without coffee, you might get headaches during the week. You've got to expect you're going to have some struggles. If you're doing without chocolate, some of y'all are going to be pulling your hair out or somebody else's hair out. Amen. You get upset because you like your chocolate. Amen. So, so you got to expect that. You got to expect some spiritual struggles. Satan will attack you. Spirit, you will have spiritual things. Maybe not the Satan, but you'll have spiritual things that will happen in your life. You got to prepare yourself for that. You got to expect to hear from God. If I'm fasting, I'm doing it for a reason. I want to hear from God. I want to hear him talk to me. So, how should we fast? I'm just reviewing over last week. We build up to it. Don't start off, I hope you didn't start off last week going, I'm going to fast for six days without food. Not smart. Especially when you've been indulging your whole life. So take one meal or take something, just a little bit. Again, like a rifle, not a shotgun, and build up to it. And hopefully this week you'll fast a little bit more. And then by the end of the third week, whatever uh, maybe addictions you have, they're gone, or whatever new habits you have, they've come into your life. Get along with God and His Word. Limit outside voices as much as possible. Make it a spiritual journey, not a wrestling match. You know, keep a toothpick in your mouth. Don't make people ask you what you've been eating. Amen. Just do something like that. So the spirit of our fast is to humble ourselves before God, call upon Him for His divine will, and from our heart we desire to diminish influences of the spirit uh, of the flesh in our lives. Bring me up just a little bit more, if you will. In Matthew chapter 6, we picked up on these three points. In Matthew chapter 6 says, when you fast, when you give, when you pray. We're going to talk about when you pray. Everybody say pray. pray. Now, a lot of times you talk know about prayer, people kind of start shutting down just a little bit, but I just want you to pay attention just a little bit. Take a few notes and listen to me. Prayer is not optional. Prayer, if you're in a foxhole in the military and they're shooting at you, prayer is not optional. There are no atheists in a, in a foxhole. You're going to pray. Amen. When you get in trouble, what do you do? You pray. Amen. I, I went visit a lady this week. She said, Pastor, I started fasting and I quit smoking. I said, of course you did. You're in the hospital. <laughs> Amen. You, you should have to shut it down. Your whole life is fixing to change. Prayer is not optional. 1 Timothy 2 1, I exhort you. I'm begging you. I'm asking you. Therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So pray. 1 Timothy 2 8, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Well, hold on. I'm Baptist. I don't care what you think you are. Lift your holy hands. Amen. Pray, raise, it ain't nothing wrong with lifting your hand. Lifting your hands is a sign of surrender. Anytime a cop pulled me over, I lifted my hands. I surrendered. <laughs> Amen. When I'm before God, I surrender. Amen. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to lift my hands before him without wrath and doubting. So who's our best example of prayer? It was Jesus. In Luke chapter 5, verse 15, but so much the more went there a fame abroad of him. Everybody knew about him. He was healing the sick and raising the dead. Great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. They wanted to hear him and have him touch them. And then he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Jesus would often pray all night in order to deal with people all day. Listen to me. He would pray all night in order to deal with people all day. If you got to deal with certain people in your life, if there are people in your life that disturb you and bother you and aggravate you or pull on you, quit being so disturbed by them, start praying. Because you, in order to deal with them, you're going to have to talk to God. You're going to have to pray. So he'd go to the mountain and pray. He'd separate himself even from his disciples and pray. Amen. And give God time. It, just to talk to him. So he's our greatest example. I'm not asking you to pray all night. You know, sometimes we, we box prayer in. Uh, we have a beginning and an end. We just kind of, it becomes formal. The Pharisees were very formal. In Matthew chapter 6, it talked about it. They were very formal. They prayed for everybody to hear them and to see them and to let folk know. And this is what they said, because we're not like those sinners. In order for Jesus to deal with sinners, he'd pray all night so he could be around them all day. He liked being around sinners. 
Uh, and, and I, you know, when you say that word, it's, it has such a, a negative connotation to it. But the truth of the matter is, we were all sinners before we met Jesus. Amen. And, and he changed our lives and turned us around. Now, I know you don't believe this, but you're actually a saint. You're sitting beside a saint. Just kind of cut your eyes over and see if you see a halo. <laughs> Amen. You're no longer the sinner you were. You're saved by grace. Amen. Through faith, not of works. God did that in your life. Amen. He turned us around. So prayer is the bending of my will. It's something that breaks it down. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, such a powerful verse. Amen. If my people, they call by my name, will humble themselves, what does uh, fasting do? It humbles us. Amen. And if they pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and heal their land. Heal Texas. Heal South uh, the South, heal the North, amen, heal America. It, the only hope for this nation is this verse, right. amen, that if we humble ourselves and pray and seek his face, then he'll, he'll do what he says. But until then, you don't know what's going to happen in your life. What should be your attitude? See, the word attitude in Scripture is actually spirit. What kind of spirit you got? What kind of attitude you got? The attitude of prayer is praying by faith. Faith is believing. I got a message this week from a lady who I, I really do love. She lives in another state, and, and uh, her husband was uh, actually, in some ways, I can just use the term murdered, and uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was a homicide by whatever, and uh, she's having trouble forgiving the guy that did it. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you struggle with that? And she said, Pastor, if I don't forgive him, am I going to heaven? And I understand what she's asking. She's straight up with it. And I said, you have to forgive by faith. And it, you may not feel it. How many understand that we don't live by our feelings? You have to forgive by faith. And you, the feelings may never come. Because what happened was awful. It took uh, the love of your life from you. It took security from you. It, it, took, it took love from you. So you've got to forgive this man by faith. And then she starts telling me that he's in trouble again. So she's following his life. you got to back away from that. you got to release it and let it go. Amen. And by faith, you got to learn. So faith is a part. So when I'm praying, I'm praying by faith. Amen. It's my attitude. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, And without faith, it's impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who are earnestly seeking. So, you know, people say, you're crazy. No, I believe God exists. I believe it with every breath I breathe. There's no way evolution could have done this here. Amen. They, it couldn't create such a beautiful group of people. It can't happen. Amen. It's ridiculous. Life has to come from life. And there was no life in evolution before we showed up. God spoke and there was life. So life comes from life. And here we are. Amen. So I, I believe God exists. I believe he's out there and in here and around here. He's everywhere. Amen. He, he's there. Because anyone who comes to him got to believe. So if I'm praying, I got to pray in faith. I got to believe. Now, I'm not telling you to have any kind of nonsense here. I'm telling you, when you pray, stand and believe. And you say, well, it ain't, God ain't answered. Are you believing? Do you believe he exists? Do you believe when you talk to him? He said, hey, I got your back. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm for you. I'm going to answer your prayer. If any two gather together, pray and not waver. James was one of them. Well, he's the brother of Jesus. He's one of them. Matter of fact, he, I don't even know if James ever saw gray. He seen black and white. He said, yeah, show me your faith by your works. You got faith? I want to see some works. I want to see something that shows me you really believe God and that God does this. This is a guy that was beheaded for the love of Jesus. Amen. So he says to us, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For, uh, then he goes on to say, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. You're not going to get anything because you keep wavering. Well, I hope God answers it. Well, I don't know. Well, it's been 10 minutes. I don't know what's going to happen here today. Amen. When you pray, pray believing. Then he goes on to say, a double-bodied man is unstable in all his ways. That ain't just in prayer. That's in every part of life. Amen. Don't be double-minded. When you make your mind up, go for it. Press into it. 
Amen. When I got a message yesterday, do you want to go to an NFL game? Well, let me think about that. Yes. Yeah, I like them Texans. They full of boys I know about. I want to go to that game. Yeah, I didn't have it. Well, what an unstable. Amen. I, I, sh I showed my wife the text, and she said, well, I don't know. And then within 30 seconds, she talked herself into it. He was just, you had to have been there. It was funny. I won't say anything about that in the second service, and neither will y'all. <laughs> Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, you'll have them. Believe it. Amen. Receive it. Hang on to it. Pray according to the will of God. That's another thing. Sometimes we ask for things that ain't got nothing to do with God. And God said, why am I going to do that? Pink Cadillac. You lost your mind. Amen. There better be hickles out there than that. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So if you want to guarantee something in your life, ask according to the will of God. Amen. What you know to believe what God has in your life. So who can pray? Individuals can pray. When you pray, I love this here in Matthew chapter 6. Verse 6 says, but thou, when you, when you pray, enter your closet. That word there in the Greek is, is, I think, the word, and I didn't write it down, but I think it's like tamian or something like that. I mentioned this last week. And when you pray, go into your closet and then shut the door. Everybody say, shut the door. Pray to your Father, which is a secret, and your Father, which sees in secret, shall reward you openly. There's something about going in, closing the door, and saying, God, amen, I know that, that there's a, a, a spouse out there for me. I know that there's a, a house out there for me. I know that you've got healing out there for me. I know that, God, you've got people that you want me to win to you. I want to win people to you. Though I can't take a house to heaven. I can't take anybody to heaven except folk I win to you. So I know they in this class. Let me be an evangelist. When's the last time you prayed to be an evangelist? That, God, you would help me at school to win people to Jesus. Us. You'd help me at work to win people. When's the last time you ask God? It is the most important thing in your life is to win somebody to Jesus. Amen. And if you can't plant a seed, water a seed. Believe God for them. See, I, I, I believe in this. God help me. I've always won. I was sitting yesterday. Why would God set me in a stadium of 70,000 people right next to a Cleveland Browns fanatic? Dressed up, goofy looking, eight man wearing funky glasses, part of a dog pound, setting all these Cleveland Brown folk, and I'm sitting there, and all I can think about is, God, you put me here for a reason. So I said, here, you want some of my peanuts? And I gave his girlfriend peanuts, offered peanuts all the way down the line. They took my peanuts. We get to talking, sharing with one another, amen. And I, I could tell him, foul mouth, yada, yada, yada. But it didn't stop me from trying to connect with him. I just want to be an evangelist. I just want to reach people. So when you go in your closet, ask for something that's a little more eternal. A lot of times when you ask for something that's temporal, it's right here. God, I'm in my closet. I need you to change me. Amen. My wife's been trying to change me. She can't do it. <laughs> I need you to change me. Amen. My mama's been trying to change me for years. My mama can't do it. I want you to change me. Amen. See, you can only change you. Nobody else can change you. You can fake them off, but only you can change you. Two or more. Who else can pray? Two or more. We can gather together. We can hold hands and agree. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For there two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst of them. If, if we didn't believe that, I mean, if, he did, if, if it wasn't important, he wouldn't have told us that. Then he said, as a group of people, a congregation, Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. The whole church was praying on Tuesday night. Amen. It's something about just getting together and praying together and believing together. So I can't tell you how important prayer is, but I'll try. It divided the Red Sea. It made a rock gush water in the wilderness. Hannah prayed for a child and got Samuel. Samuel changed the life of little David. Amen. David changed the life of a whole kingdom. Amen. It all started with a prayer of Hannah, believing God for a child. Elijah prayed fire down from heaven. Again, it affected a whole kingdom. David prayed about pursuing and overcoming when his family was taken away from him. It quenched the flames of a fiery furnace. It muzzled the jaws of a lion and voided the poison of 
of vipers. It conquers devil. It dispatches angels. The disciples never said, Lord, teach us to sing. Teach us to make money. Teach us to play music. Lord, teach us to preach. The disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. If there's one thing we see you doing, Jesus, over and over, it ain't walking on the water. It ain't raising the dead. It ain't multiplying fish and bread. We see you praying. We know that is the secret sauce behind the raising of the dead, behind the bread and the fish multiplying, the behind the walking on the water. The only way you can do all that is through one word, P-R-A-Y, Come on. pray. Come on. Teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Pray. If I could just learn to pray, if I could just learn to talk to you. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. We saw you praying and talking. I believe when Jesus prayed to God, his Father, he didn't do this. I believe he did this. I believe he was looking up because he'd been there. He knew what it looked like. I believe he smiled. I believe he cried. I believe he laughed. I believe he was having an absolute conversation with an invisible father. And a lot of times we get this. Father. And God's in heaven going. What? <laughs> Teach us to pray. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, holy is your name. Yeah, your kingdom come. Had they not asked the question, we would have had the disciples' prayer. It's not the Lord's prayer. It's the disciples' prayer. Give us, give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everybody else's sins against us. Help us to forgive them also. Lead us not into temptation. You see, you can't pray and stay mad. You can't do it. You can't really talk to God and stay mad. You can't pray and talk about your pastor. I'm talking about other churches. <laughs> you can't pray and talk about fellow church members. You can't pray and stay grouchy. If you're always grouchy, you ain't praying. Amen. You're not talking to the Father. You can't pray and stay negative and have a defeatist attitude. Let me, let me start closing a little bit. Stay there just for a second, Mary. Now come on up. Hey Amen. You might as well sit up here. <laughs> stay in the ready position. <laughs> this prayer blows my mind. It's the only place in the Bible that talks about a guy named Jabez. And I don't understand much about his life except it throws his, his life into a couple of verses and it says this in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. That means he had a family. How many brothers? I'm probably a bunch of them because every family there, they, they had, you know why they had kids then? Is to help them work. We have kids to keep us working. <laughs> Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez because it sounded like pain, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Now, mama, how many of you mamas understand that when you gave birth, it was a little bit painful? <laughs> okay? So when she mentions this, she's saying, his birth caused me more pain than the rest of them. The rest, or, or it would have been all y'all had gave me pain. But she singles him out and says, he caused me difficulty. He was a difficult child. He, you know what I'm talking about? He was, a pain, he was a pain. This kid was a pain. Some of you have had children and grandkids that were absolutely wonderful. But to tell the truth, some of them were a pain. <laughs> Follow me? And this is how Jabez come up in life. And he felt this tag upon him. And Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. So now we know that he's an adult. And he said, oh, that you would bless me 
and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from my name, from this pain. And God granted his request. Now, I have dwelt on this scripture all week. Knowing I was preaching this, it hit me because I've preached this before. I've done it in four or five parts. But I dwelt on it. I even told my pastor this morning, I wonder what it was that Jabez was praying to have enlarged. We think it was land. But was it himself that he wanted God to enlarge? What was it he needed? Did he need friends? God, enlarge my friendships. Enlarge my life. Enlarge my sphere of influence. Enlarge. And I, then I thought to myself, why don't you pray this prayer? Why don't I pray this prayer? Can I tell you that when I look at this prayer, I see Jerry Hovatter. I see a time in my life when I felt pain in my life, and I asked God to enlarge my borders. And I prayed this very prayer, and I asked God to do it, and God did it. I went from a motel into an auction barn into building a, a Dutch barn. Some of you were there in the building more, and then my life went into pain again, and I prayed this prayer again, living out on a ranch in New Caney, and all of a sudden God started enlarging my borders. Amen. He began to expand us in such a way that we ended up purchasing the place, buying it. Seventy people signed papers for a million two that we would pay for it. And God began to enlarge our borders. He began to take the pain away from us again and began to expand our lives. We can pray this prayer. You can pray it in your business. You can pray it in your home. You can pray it in your school. You can ask God to enlarge and take pain away from you. But you got to be bold to do it. You got to ask God to forgive your past to do it. You got to say, God, I don't care what mama said. Come on. Can I get an Amen. I don't care what the employer said. I don't care what that other pastor said. I don't care what that woman I was once married to said. I believe in the name of Jesus that you can enlarge my border. Jabez's name meant, name meant distress, vexation. Amen. His name reveals the times of hardships in which he was born. And again, we don't know what it was, but we know he wore a tag on him all his life. You know, I was, I, my tag was gimp. Always limping. Always, you know, I remember going down the halls of, of Colbert Heights High School on the shoulders of other people with my crutches out slapping people as I went by. I remember being in a wheelbarrow with my friends rolling me up to a, a door as I went trick-or-treating because I was unable to walk and I had, I had uh, cast on my foot. They just throw me in a wheelbarrow and run me around. God loved my friends. I had good friends. <laughs> they wanted to know, make sure I was there. Because I was the key to the liquor. <laughs> you got friends. You had friends like that. Come on, give me an amen. amen. But I understood pain. I understood pain coming up. In essence, Jabez, he was familiar with it. Listen to me. Pain, hurt, ache, grief. Be careful with pain. Be careful with it. Everybody here has experienced pain. Emotional, spiritual, physical pain. Some of you are in pain right now. You wish I hush up. I ain't doing it got five, ten more minutes. Y'all give me five, ten more minutes? Okay, all right, all right. Listen, be careful with it. Too much pain, and you start anticipating it. You start looking for it. You start thinking it's coming. The result is your pain begins to lock you in. You become afraid to try because of pain. Pain, pain makes you afraid of relationships. You got hurt. I ain't never going to have a relationship again. That's what pain does to you. Pain, pain, afraid of new opportunities. I tried a business and it failed. I tried this, it, I, it hurt. I'm not going to do it. Afraid to venture out. Afraid to go out again. You know, I, I went through a situation a couple of years ago going snowmobiling with my kids and my grandkids, and I got caught in literally it, the anxiety was overwhelming. I, I have not felt that kind of anxiety in my life. Driving through snow, I couldn't see the, uh, the, the sides. I'm in a little Camry, and my daughter was directing me on a GPS telling me, Dad, the road's going to start turning to the right. I couldn't even see the road. And I was, and, and for the, like, it was like the first time in my life, there was like an anxiety over me that I got my two, I got two of my kids and two of my grandkids in this vehicle, and I don't know if we're going to make it. And I'm sliding all over the road in a foreign car, made in Japan, and, uh, uh, and I, I don't know if I'm going to make it. And I felt that. 
and it makes you want to stop and not do it again. And I had to press through that later on in life and do it again. Because pain will make you back off. It'll stop you from venturing out. Afraid of failure. Afraid of disappointment. Pain. You'll just say, just leave me alone. I just live with my pain. Listen, Jabez is not that way. So I got to start closing here. First, his prayer. I, I call it the ABCDEs. I don't know why. It just seemed to work better. But when I look at Jabez, I see attitude. I see a belief. I see a capacity that he had. I see determination in this little prayer. And I see enthusiasm that he had. Amen. When you're more familiar with pain than praise, what do you do? You pray. You pray. And that's what he did. Bless me indeed. Everybody say, bless me. Some of you are afraid to say it. You feel like it's selfish to say it, but he wasn't. Amen. He said, God, I want you to bless me. That's attitude. That's belief. God has influence in my life, and I need you to bless. I can't bless you if he don't bless me. Listen, you can't bless your kids unless God blesses you. You can't bless your grandkids unless God blesses you. Everybody say, God bless me. Now, I ain't talking about a sneeze again. I will not bless you for a sneeze. I will not do that. You blow snot all you want, I ain't going to say bless you. That ain't blessings. Amen. That's fairy tales. I'll bless you when you're sick, pray over you, ask God to bless But I want you to say it too and ask God to bless you. It's an absolute blessing, a distinct blessing. It's about me. It's a pronounced blessing. I'm saying it. It's a remarkable blessing, incredible blessing, ridiculous blessing it is, abundant blessing, a blessed indeed. Jabez had a sanction, a God-sanctioned vision. He wanted God to bless him. His only hope was in God. His whole life was about pain. When I read what David said in Psalm chapter 40, verse 1, he said, I waited patiently for the Lord. Sometimes when you pray, wait, wait on him. He turned to me, he heard my cry. He lifted me up out of a slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock. If you want to come up out of mud, you want to find a solid place to put your feet. He gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. When God pulls you out of something, takes you out of a mess and gives you a message, out of a test and gives you a testimony, takes your feet out and puts you on a hard place, and other people have been watching. They've been watching. Mm-hmm. Let's see how you deal with that lawsuit. Let's see how you deal with your neighbors being mad at you and putting a fence up. Let's see how you deal now with y'all ain't got Coach Saban there. Let's watch your attitude. Let's see how you do. Mm-hmm. They watch. And then when God lifts you up and put your feet on solid ground, they're going to see it. And they're going to fear. And they're going to put their trust in God. Because they watch what God did in your life through prayer. He's going to put a new song in your mouth. No longer will you be singing. This is funny. Our daughter Jill went over to her aunt's house. And she got on her computer. And she said, what's the code to get in? Now, you young people ain't going to understand this. But the code was BR549. Ken, you know that one, huh? BR, Joseph don't know that, but, 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 but you know that. You got help. Uh, BR 549. It was by the prophet, Junior Samples. <laughs> he going to put a new song in your mouth. It won't be gloom, despair, and agony on me, deep, dark, depression. So, so y'all remember the song? I done lost it. Something about misery. Amen. That's part of Hee Haw. He's going to put a new song in your mouth, a song of victory. He said, I want you to bless me. I want you to enlarge my border. Amen. God sanctioned ambition. Jabez asked for increase. He wanted God to expand his opportunities for service. One of the great blessings in my life has been watching Pastor David Clowers, Pastor Joseph, uh, Joseph Walter, Josiah Ramirez. When they first got, when his young man got to me, all he had was my weed eater. <laughs> Now I got a beautiful Russian wife, a home to live in, nice Ford truck, and a, and a farfin nougat, and they drive around. I watched this young man here show up in this church, meet a young lady from this church, marry a young lady in this church, have two beautiful kids in this church, driving a Dodge, two Dodges now. I've watched, he, he showed up in a little vehicle he could barely crawl out of. I think he had to give it away. Nobody wanted to buy it. I watched the increase. I watched Pastor David Clowers show up, 
ended up with three kids, showed up in, a, in his dad's vehicle in a tore up Oldsmobile, left here in a 20 foot box truck, loaded down with more guns than, than the National Guard, <laughs> blessed of God, and all I saw was God increasing, incre enlarge my borders. You gotta pray it. You gotta understand God, teach me to pray. When I pray, things change. Amen. Cancers leave. Diabetes goes because I've been fasting. I got my body under control. Things, I'm, I'm taking control here now. Things are shifting in my life. Amen. No longer am I, do I have limits and barriers. Psalm 142.7, set me free from my prison that I may praise your name. Can I tell you something? In your prison, praise until he set you free. Paul the apostle taught us that. In prison, he praised, and God opened the doors. David says here, set me free from my prison, and I may praise your name. Then the righteous will gather about me because of your goodness to me. I want you to see it again. He set my feet on solid rock, and those saw it feared. And here he said it again. Amen. That whenever I go through life and I start singing to God and I start praising God, amen, and I, I start giving Him praise, look what happens. They gather about me because of the goodness to me. People gather around me because of how good God is to me. Amen. They keep coming. And then He said, keep your hand on me. Don't take your hand from me. The Scripture, and I heard people say this over and over, that when you're in the hand of God, it's so important. Understand this. That little dude back there that was singing, Jesus loved me. Hey, little feller, when my kids were that size and they put their hand in my hand, I held their hand. They didn't hold my hand. I held their hand. And we walking through a, a Walmart or a, a Kroger's or a mall, I'd hold their hand when they like that. And they tried to pull away. They couldn't get away. You know what? I'm going to tell you something something about God. His grip don't slip. Everybody say it. His grip don't slip. Amen. He don't slip. When he got hold of your hand, he's going to make sure you get through it. So in this moment, Jabez, in just this, it's a bold statement. Let your hand be with me. That's determination. With God's sanctioned cooperation, Jabez asked for God's guidance, same as David prayed. He leads me beside still water. How did I get by that water? <laughs> he led me. Amen. How did I get to this wonderful place in my, God, how did I get here? 20 years ago, I had nothing. At least I felt like I had, I had a vehicle and I didn't even have heat in it. I was living in a borrowed place. I was living in, in RVs and in, uh, in uh, old uh, horse trailers. Anywhere I could put my head. Pain. Here I am. How did I get here? Hmm. And keep me from harm that I may not that it may not pain me. Many of us are afraid to ask God for big things. Amen. And God granted him his request enthusiastically. Jesus said, ask, seek, knock. The acronym simply is ASK, ask. Ask, seek, knock. You have not because you didn't ask. You didn't seek after. God has a plethora of great things, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness. He has so many things that are temporal and eternal he wants to bless his children with. And we ain't got it because we don't ask. I got five kids, and I promise you they learned something in life. They ask. They've learned that secret. They've heard me preach it. And they know that favor follows whoever favors the Father. And if you favor the Father, the Father going to bless you. Amen. It's up to you to favor him. Hebrews 12, 11. No discipline seems pleasant at the time. I used this verse last week, but painful. But later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Understand this. We're under grace. You ain't got to fast. You ain't got to pray. You ain't got to give. You say, okay, I ain't got to do nothing. I can still get to heaven. Yeah, it's by grace are you saved. But I'll tell you this. Your, the grace of God ought to push you to pray. It ought, it, ought, it ought to command you to give. 
It ought to drag you into fasting. You ought to thank God you can do it. Amen. Because when we get there to the other side, I think it's going to matter. I think it's going to matter that we prayed and we fasted and we gave. And God said, you know what? I would, I, I would, have, I would have healed you of that, but you never asked me. I would have blessed you there, but you never asked me. I would have enlarged your business, but you never asked me. I was waiting, but you never asked me. You didn't seek after me. You didn't seek for it. You didn't, you didn't turn the light on so you could find it. Amen. Yeah, there, there was people I put around you for you to talk to about me. And you never went in your closet and asked God. They, you ever asked me if you could be an evangelist? All you, I, I would have given you the words to say. I told you, don't worry about what to say. When you get there, I'll tell you what to say. But you was too buck, 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 get scared. You didn't ask me. We're supposed to die training, not trying. I want to train. This is about training. I want, I want to die training, not trying. So I want to ask you to do me. Do yourself a favor with me. Back up, sister, to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. We're going to pray this together. Would you stand with me? 1 Chronicles chapter 4. You need to underline it in your Bible. You need to find it. Go to the very next verse. There it is. No, that's not it. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. There it is. Do you see that O part? Y'all see O? Everybody see O? We're going to put an exclamation on it. Y'all know what that looked like? Long slash with a dot at the bottom? Called exclamation. I learned that in college. Say it with me. Oh! Come on, say it again. Oh! Go with it. That you would bless me. Everybody say, bless me. Bless me. Won't you bless me? And enlarge. Let your be with me. Keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted him his request. I want you to write it down. First Chronicles 4.9. I want you to pray that this week while you're fasting. When you fast, when you pray, God bless me. Because if God blesses you, you can bless your kids and your grandkids. Amen. God has blessed me. He's poured it on me. I'm a blessed man. And my grandkids have been blessed for it. My children have been blessed for it. These men have been blessed for it. Amen. Blessings follow whenever you're blessed. Why don't you just ask God to forgive your past? Some of you say, I'm not worthy. I am the least worthy of anybody I know to deserve a blessing. To pastor churches so great as the little country church. To have people on the outside all over the country and the world now watching and commenting on what happens in this house. Oh, that God would bless me. I know I'm under grace, but I don't want to take advantage of that. Amen. I want to pray. I want to fast. I want to give. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, I ask you to bless this house. My prayer, God, is that the excitement I felt in that stadium last night would eventually invade every church in America. Yeah, that people would lift their holy hands and give you praise. That you lift us up out of the mire and the clay and the mud, set our feet on the rock. That everybody that sees you would say, I know that man and woman have been praying. I know that prayer works. God, teach us to pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise in this house. If you need a tithe or offer an envelope, it's right in front of you. You can be seated for a brief moment. Amen. We'll get you out of here quickly. Hallelujah. If you need an envelope, it's right there. Hopefully, you've done made your tithe and offering out. If you want to give online, you go to holywild.net slash give. Hopefully, this week, you will get your giving uh, receipts in and what you gave in 2023. Know that if you didn't give over $500, you won't get that because we get a lot of that throughout the year. 
Uh, but if you need it, please call the office and we'll get it to you if you need it for your tax purposes. But uh, I want you to know that we've been responsible with your finances. Also, I want to thank you for praying for our daughter, Jalisa, who will be, who I affectionately call Wilbur. Uh, she'll be heading out to uh, Czechistan, <laughs> somewhere like that. And uh, uh, Turkey and Morocco for five months. She'll be leaving tonight. Thank you for giving toward her. We've set the first agenda for her. We've given enough money that she can go. Uh, we don't know if we got enough to get her back. Ain't concerned about that. That's none of my business. Hey, Amen. That's God's business. I told her that's God's business. I do what I can as, as a pastor for a lot, you know. But, uh, uh, you know, it's, you're going to have to believe by faith, like everybody else, that God will bless you. And uh, so thank you for praying for her and for her protection while she goes. That's what we give today for believing God for. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. Love you, church. Pastor Joseph, y'all give him a hand as he comes.